Hi everyone, I'm very happy to be here and I'm super excited about Painter 2018 and the new Thick Paint. Golden Light was painted with several of the Thick Paint brushes that I made for Painter. I'm excited about the new Thick Paint texture and I wanted to click here. Uh, I'm going to bring forward a new image here and just make a few brush strokes. I, as you see here, I've made myself a little custom palette to make it easy to switch between some of the brushes I'm going to be showing today. And to access the thick paint category, you go up here to the brush selector and you see thick paint is chosen and the oils palette knife is chosen. So we have it right here. And the thick paint is very, very luscious. It also allows you to to blend. And I'm just going to make a little puddle of paint. I'm going to choose here the smooth round oils and we'll make a puddle of paint here. Press harder. I can dig into it lighter and I could build it up and go back again to this oils palette knife that allows me to scrape into this paint like so. Now I'm going to demo the rest of these default brushes and then show a couple of tips because I made some modifications to a couple of them. Uh, I wanted to go up here and show you the items in the property bar that allow us to, say for instance, change the size of the brush right here, the opacity of the brush. We could also change the paint load. We can click right here and then we could drag up to load our brush with more paint, down, less paint, so less paint, and up here, more paint. Here we have the bleed, which is kind of like a blend, and right now this is set at 82%, which allows us to do this type of color blending that you saw here with the blue and the pinks. Infinite paint allows us to to continue to have the media flowing through our brush. So it's really exciting and we can turn it off if we want a brush stroke to say for instance run out of paint sooner. Here are techniques. You have the thick right here, the thick paint look, a drier look for a drier brush, the soft, so you don't see as much of the scrape texture there, and then a thin, almost like a glazing. It's very useful, and you see it flattens out the paint in that a little bit too. Over on the right, we have the extended property bar, which allows us to, to hide and show the dab options right here, dab profile, and we can hide and show the thick paint, media, and brush panels. And this is the quickest way to access these panels. Okay, I'm going to bring the painting forward. Well, actually, uh, let's see. Let me just scroll up here. And we'll have a look at some of the other brushes. The Real Bristle Oils Filbert has a bristle texture. And I'm going to make sure I'm at actual size so that you can see that really well. The bristle texture. And we can paint over this. And then we'll look at the Real Bristle Oils Fan Short. As I lift up the brush, the bristles spread a little bit into a fan. And then the Real Bristle Oils Flat. Okay, now, um, I wanted to show a modification for a brush right here. With the Real Bristle Oils fan, I wanted to have the bristles stand out a little bit more. So the way that I did this was coming over here to the thick paint brush. I'm sorry. 
was to come over here and increase the hardness on the thick paint media panel. Sorry about that. So if you do this, you see more of the bristling. I can do the same thing to the real bristle oils filbert here. So, and if we go here back to the default, you can see, and I'll choose the pink, so see the difference here, what the hardness will do. Uh, I also wanted to show another version of my grainy palette knife, and I used this on the Golden Light paintings. We'll go there and make a couple brush strokes on this as well. So I added grain to this brush, and I did this by, see the default is, uses the paint type here that you see, and to change it, to one that paints with grain, you go right here in the type panel and choose paint with grain. And then I also increase the grain height right here to 70. It was like around 45. So here's the default. Oh, I have, excuse me, need to go back to the thick paint. the thick technique. There it is. And here. Okay, now how did I use these on my painting? Let's go here. And you see I built up a lot of layers on this. If I want to paint some more of the grainy look here and I want to go to actual size so you can actually see the, all the texture in this. Now this was painted primarily with the um, Real Bristle Oils Fan and also the Real Bristle Oils Filbert Thick Paint variants. Also I used the Oils Palette Knife and the Smooth Round Oils and I used this grainy version of the Oils Palette Knife. I can, I can sample some color here, some yellow from my painting and then make some strokes across here so you see how I, I painted the highlights on my painting. So how are we doing for time, Tanya? Um, we're doing well. I've, I've got some questions coming in here, so I can hold them until you're done, or I can start throwing some of them out. Okay, I'm ready for questions. Okay, um, so there was a question wondering, well, first of all, a compliment, because we can really see your panels and palettes and menus very nicely. So Anne is wondering oh, what good. Thank you. Thank you. Pardon? Um, she's wondering what kind of mask you're working on. What kind of? What kind of mac and hash do you have? Oh, 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 I'm sorry. What kind of mac? Um, this is an iMac 27, and it has 4 gigs of video RAM, and it's um, just under 4 gigahertz speed, 3.7 or 3. 8 gigahertz and change, I think. Okay. And what tablet are you using, Cher? I am using the Intuos Pro Medium. I like the Medium because I can put it on my lap when I'm doing quick sketches and so forth, or if I'm doing a long painting session, or put it on the table. Okay, fantastic. Um, and something I didn't mention at the very beginning, I'm getting a lot of questions about what is the upgrade price, are we getting a special offer? So anybody registered for this session, we will be sending out a special offer on Painter to you if you have not already received that. And that's for both the full and the upgrade version of the product. Um, uh -huh. So that'll go out by tomorrow morning um, and you know I'm thinking that most of you have already received that no matter what region you're in. Paul wants to know why you work in the Mac. 
Uh, well, I was introduced to Mac, Paul, in the mid-80s with a Mac 512K that an illustration and design mentor of mine had. And the first thing that I painted using McPaint was looking out the window and doing a mouse painting of the hillside. <laughs> So I've been with a Mac for a long time, and I, I have also used PCs when I've been teaching and so on, and, and I usually have a PC laptop and a Mac desktop. Okay. Now, there are some questions just about the thick paint technology, and these are really good. Sandra Great. is wondering, is the texture actually in the brush and not on the canvas? The texture, hello? Go ahead, yeah. share. Okay, the texture is in the media and the brush. There is a kind of like a something like a digital depth layer. Um, I wanted to point out something up here um, that uh, we can also manipulate the surface lighting for the thick paint and change the shadows and so on. Um, let, me, let me go to this document uh, with all the crazy brush strokes right here and we can see this better. So if we want to change our shadow strength, watch this. So right now um, what we're looking at is the highlights and shadows in the depth layer, which is kind of, it's a part of the media. We could always also change our ambient light, and we can change the direction of the light here, like so. Uh, and then I also wanted to point out, if we double click on the thick paint layer, we can bring up the amount slider here. So if we increase the amount, say 650, this is going to make it look really screaming when we go back like this. Uh, 100 is the default, so um, let's go back here, and then there's another spot uh, in preferences. If we go here, general, um, thick paint layer, see, we can adjust our default amount here. So if you want um, a, a really deep, thick paint look, you know, you could start out instead of at 100% for your default amount, you can make it 150, 200, or whatever you desire, or less if you want something that's more subtle. So I hope that helped answer your question. I do believe so. I don't see anything else coming through the questions panel. Um, yeah, so there's just there seems to be a lot of questions about the interaction. We've got the thickness in the brushes and then also being able to integrate that with the paper texture like you just showed in the strokes on the right there. Right. And then um, also there are a lot. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Um, they're also wondering how this differs from impasto. It's more fluid and versatile than impasto. Um, so there's actually more control over the highlights and shadows than we have with impasto. I'm also a big fan of impasto. Um, and it is possible to do part of your painting with impasto. And then if you'll notice, like, if, say for instance, if I click here on the canvas and then I paint, it's going to create a new paint layer a new thick paint layer. So it's possible to do part of your painting uh, on layers or the canvas with impasto and then do thick paint layers over the top so you actually get, you're able to combine both of the types of media. So if we go back here to the surface lighting, the upper part is for the impasto, and the area right in here is just for thick paint. And this area right here is for both. Okay, great. 
Um, so there's still a lot of questions coming in about thick paint. Great. And we are also going to have Skip show um, the brushes. So maybe I'll throw a couple more out to you. I just want to make sure I leave enough time for Skip as well. Um, everybody is still wondering, someone asked, could you just show changing the paper texture, like a few different textures? With oh, some of, the oh of course. Yeah. Of course. Now, I have one of my favorite textures right here, and this is one of the ones I used in my Golden Light painting. And this is the gessoed canvas. If I choose the grainy palette knife that I made here, you'll see the texture coming through. And then if I switch texture over here to the basic texture, you see the look is very different. And if we go to my golden light painting, you'll see I used the gessoed canvas. You see it in here, and then you also see some of the basic texture back in here where I just wanted little spots of light to pick up. Did that answer your question? Would you like to see more textures? I, I think that was great. That's exactly what we wanted to see. And then, you know, okay, some of the great. Other, I think will probably be addressed when Kip um, shows off some of his brushes. So what I might do at this point is, um, if it's okay with everybody, hold the questions. And um, I just wanted to make sure that Share that you covered everything that you wanted to show us today. Your painting is beautiful. Share painted this you. entire thing with the thick paint brushes. Yes. Um, well, there there was one other thing, and let me see. Just if I can do it, do it real quick. Yeah, sure. um, one of the things that I did that it was really fun for me to do was to paint this rain. So I. I'm going to go here to the bristles, and I'm going to open up the real bristle panel here and change this to rotation because I have an art pen. So this is how I painted the rain. I used the, you see my brush turning right here? I sampled some color from the cloud, and then I just pulled down with this to paint the rain. And that was really fun fun to do. It's so nice. You know, if I let's put a little more rain. Yeah, that's how we painted the rain in this, this painting. And this is one of my very favorite spots on the planet. It's an area where my husband and I take our walk before work in the morning at, around sunrise, but it was inspired by uh, a storm that came through with some really beautiful light on the water. So I, I hope you enjoyed the demo, and it's just such a pleasure to be here. I'm, I'm crazy about Painter 2018 and Thick Paint. Happy painting, everybody. Okay. Now, of course, more questions are coming in, and Kurt, <laughs> how you rotated the brush. Okay, sure. Okay. Um, the, the, let me go back and turn it back to its default. So what I did is I went over here to the bristles on the extended property bar, and I clicked here to open the real bristle panel. And under expression, I changed it to rotation. There it is. And so now I'm with my art pen, I'm able to rotate. And this is something, if you look, You'll see the little dot on the extended brush ghost right here. I'm, on, I'm over the yellow light on the water right now. Oh, there, that shows better. See that? And then now I can paint like so. That's how I rotated the brush. The uh, default brushes are set up with bearing because um, it's, it's more standard to have the, the default Wacom pen, 
Um, and if you're interested in the art pin, they're available through Wacom, and they allow you to have 360 degrees of rotation, which is, is really helpful as well. But the, the standard pin is really nice, too. So if we go back to that default brush, you'll see now I'm using bearing, and I, whoops, now I'm using bearing, and I can still get a stroke. Now I'm painting real, pressing really hard. I was using really light pressure to press, to paint the rain. Whoops. There we go. There we go. So I just found that I had a little bit more control with the art pen using the rotation because I wanted the rain to be using very, very light texture so it would be very subtle. Yeah. Did I, I hope I answered your question. Yes, you, you did. Great. Hey, right. so thank you so much, Cher. You're welcome. A great introduction to our thick paint. And um, so I'm going to go ahead, skip. I see you're still with us there. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and give you the presentation here. And while I'm doing this, um, I'm sure pretty much everybody that is on this session knows who Skip Allen is um, and that he is also an instructor at Digital Art Academy. So if any of you are looking for training on Painter 2018 or any other version of Painter, just looking to have some fun with some online training, it's a wonderful online instruction academy. And I just wanted to mention that. Thank and you. they're asking, Skip who? It's Skip Allen, <laughs> who is one of our Painter Master elites. And I can see, I see your screen here, Skip. Yes, I hope you can see it. I didn't make it bigger like Cher did. Yep, I see you have a little sketch down on the canvas there. That's correct. Okay. Are you ready for me? I am ready. Take it away. Okay, thanks. Uh, Cher, you did a beautiful job. I, I actually learned a couple of things <laughs> watching. Thank you, Skip. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, uh, thank you very much, Tanya, for asking uh, for me to help with this uh, presentation. Painter 2018 is absolutely wonderful. I think everybody's going to love it. They're going to love um, this uh thick paint, but there's lots and lots of extra stuff that's on it as well. Um, I'm trying to bring my picture up. There we go, a little bit. Okay, so what I was going to do was talk about some of the brushes I did, but at the same time uh, how I paint. And so w when I started this painting that I'm going to kind of demonstrate today, um, you know, I, I have just a blank canvas, and I add a layer, and that layer I do my little drawing, just a quick sketch to give me an idea of where I might be going. Then what I usually do is I coat a layer with, or fill a layer with some sort of color. It's exciting this year because we can now fill with texture as well, which is uh, pretty neat, but that's another subject. Then what I did is I took our, um, you know, your interactive gradient tool, and I added uh, that gradient to it, like you see here. And this is how I started uh, my painting. The next thing that I did is I used a brush called Heavy Loaded Palette Knife. And uh, this brush is, uh, it's, it's heavy. I mean, it adds a lot of paint. So if I go over here, and I want to show you another thing about thick paint. If I go over here, I've got my mixer pad with some colors kind of mixed up. If I select sample multiple colors, and the amount that I'm going to sample is determined by the slider. I'm going to sample 50 um, pixels across, and I grab up here, then I begin to paint, and you're going to see it picks up all of the color, okay, that 
you know, it's not picking up just one color, but multiple colors. Now, um, I also like to take these brushes. Now, this particular brush is a palette knife, which is a little different from the bristle brushes. And I have a art pen as well, and I, I really, I, I use my art pen almost exclusively. So I would come to angle, and I would change that to rotation. And once I do that, now I can rotate the brush and do it any number of ways. Now, see the little dot Cher was talking about? It's in the middle of the brush. What's neat about this is if I take this brush and I pull it straight down, you see I've got blue on one side and orange on the other. If I flip the brush so it's now turned upside down, look, I can put blue on the other side. You see, so the, the way I hold the brush will determine how it's going to paint which is pretty cool. Okay, so I'm going to go over here to my color set uh, library here, and I'm just going to, for funsies, grab a few colors here. I want to go to some light greens like this. And so what I would have done is I would have come in and just, this brush allows me to work very fast and really just fill in lots of stuff. Now, it, it is uh, very, very thick, right? So I probably wouldn't want it to be that thick in the long run. So I'm going to do something different. But this is what, that's basically what I would do to get started, OK? So I'm going to minimize this now, and I'm going to pick up the next brush in the line, the next painting in the line, which I think is not that one. It must be up here. Obviously, it's not. There we go. Okay, so that's what I did when I was showing you how to do uh, the heavy paint on this. Okay, so I, the reason I use the heavy loaded palette knife is because it does sort of blend some and you get this kind of nice look. Now, just today I discovered something kind of fun. <laughs> I have a brush called Grainy Fine Rake. And what I like about Grainy Fine Rake, when I switch to it and let's go to its default and I'm going to change it to rotation. It, um, when you paint lightly with it, it kind of takes some of the paint away. And when you paint heavy, you get more of that rake kind of look. But as you can see, I've got color here. So as I paint, I'm, I'm getting, I'm mixing the color. This is what I just discovered. I, I swear, I don't think it was in a previous version, but it may have been and I just missed it. When you go to sample multiple color, normally, if you sample out here, you would get white. But for whatever reason now, when you sample out here, the brush now has no paint. Look at that. So you can just scrape with it. Now, I've got scrapers, and we've got several scrapers in there. But I, I just discovered this, and, and I'm finding that I, I like the way this works. Um, because it's very quick, and I can I can keep the painting that I've done, all of the uh, you know the the dark areas and so forth, without messing it up, and I can bring the paint back down to uh, a level that I like. Now, notice that break up there. We well, all were talking about. Um, texture. And this brush is heavy with grain. And what I have selected is, let's just open this up, I have horizontal chaos selected. So you've got these big blobs or dots, and when you start to paint with this brush very, very lightly, it's going to pull up some of that paint showing what's underneath, which is why I like 
having these sinks down below. Now, I don't normally use uh, this brush to get that sort of texture. What I would use in, that, in place of this is I have another brush I'm trying to get back to. Thing. I have another brush called Heavy Texture and uh, Heavy Texture Palette Knife. And if you, I'm going to select some of this color here. Let's just get this one. All right, so if I put this on the canvas, I'm going to get that kind of heavy texture. And what's really nice about that is look at how, now this, this has got, um, it's got this uh, nubby laid paper as, a, as the paper. But look at how it really gives you this heavy texture. And what I probably ought to do, I'm going to take the paper back to its default setting. There. And now it'll be uh, bigger. There you go. You can see the texture better. And I think that's really, really neat to be able to get those uh, textures with your brushes. And if you want to know how I got to my default, I've got a little script that I use that takes it back to the default. So if I move any of these things and I just punch that, it takes it back to the default paper. Default is 100, 150. I also have one for flow maps, which is very cool. So if you have a flow map like that and you go, dum, there you go, you're back to the default. I think I like these little tricks that you can do. Okay, so what I would have done here is I would have gone back using this brush with this paper I would have gone in here and taken off some of the uh, paint and left this sort of rough texture. Okay, so let's go to the next stage, which uh, is somewhere. Did you? Did somebody want to say something? I thought I heard you coming in with something. Nope. Well. I actually do have a question. Okay, shoot. Answer it. Um, they're wondering, and it's Jay Casper, so I'm not sure what the first name is, but do you have certain papers that you prefer to use with your six paints? I, um, yes, uh, but I'm finding that I use anything. Now, I have, you know, painters so new, I haven't added papers to, uh, my, to my uh, uh, to uh, this version of painter yet so um, but papers that I really like I mean I love gesso canvas like share um, I like this dot here I like this one I love these two here the course chipboard and concrete and then I'm really crazy about any of these rough textures like Featherland, Window Frost, Madness, or Horizontal Chaos. And with watercolor, I really like the coarse paper. But what these, they have, when you go into these papers, they have some sort of interesting things happening. And if you, you know, increase the size of the, the paper itself, then you're going to get uh, you know, a different kind of look. Look, see how you're beginning to get uh, a, it's almost like a, um, uh, you know, the paper itself. I mean, this is a good thing about paper. It, you could take a paper that was like a landscape or something or, you know, had a texture that was like uh, the side of a mountain or whatever and do this to it and, and you would be bringing that texture in. If you take that same paper and bring it down, 
I'm going to darken it a little bit, give it a little more contrast. See, now I'm going to get a much, um, the texture is going to be a little bit more uh, tight. See, and, and, and you, I mean, this is, this is the beauty of Painter, because not only can you make changes to the texture, but I can change the way the brush works and all of that just on the fly. You can't, you can't get that kind of control everywhere. It's, it, it's really uh, pretty amazing. Okay, so what I did next, if I can find it, is I did this sort of thing. And I went to my grainy fine rake Okay, and so I had my uh, uh, sketch there to kind of go by, and what I did was uh, I just came in here and just sort of started placing the leaves first, and I, you know I'm not I don't care about anything being real. Uh, accurate at this moment. I'm just interested in sort of getting the, the feeling down. So I would just come in and, you know, make some quick little marks like this. And they're going to read as leaves later. You know, uh, when you're working with palette knife like this, it doesn't it doesn't have to be exactly right. And the beauty of this, look, see, you can turn that palette knife, you can make round strokes and heavy strokes, and you can cut into it, you can add more uh, paint to it. See, if I do light, I'm adding fair amount of paint. If I do something, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, if I do light, yeah, I'm adding paint, and if I paint a little heavier, I'm going to cut into it. See that? I don't know if you can see it like that. Let me make it a little bit bigger. Sorry about that, folks. Okay. Now, that'll make it easier. By the way, I'm using, um, this is the simplified toolbar, and this is the command bar. You can find those in the simple layout. I love that stuff because I can put everything over here on the right and not take up much space. Okay, so I can put in paint like that, and then see, I can get more and less. And so you can, you, you really, you have a lot of control this stuff. Now this is a rake, so I'm getting, you know, little lines in it rather than having a very smooth look. Okay, so what I was trying to say was I would come in and I would do um, the, I would take this brush and I would just simply find the color that I want to work with and I would just begin to put in, you know, something that kind of gave me the feeling of petals. Now, I'm going to work much thicker. And so once I get to that stage, now I can come in and I can start pulling this whole thing together. And I will tell you that I, at some point I totally forgot this flower down here. <laughs> it would have been a lot better if I'd put it in, but well, you know, that's the way things work. All right, so the next step was to um, kind of really bring the thick paint into play. And uh, to do that, I used another brush. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this back, not that one. I'm going to open this one back up, I think. Yep. And number three, I'm going to close it. I'm not going to save it. 
And I'm going to open it again so that it looks the way it should look. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is show you a little bit more about working thick. I'm also working fairly, uh, I'm only working at 100 ppi, which um, is, uh, you know, going to show a lot of uh, texture to it that really you don't need to do. I'm, I'm going to switch now to a brush that is not in the set. This brush is called um, Heavy Cut. Um, it's essentially the same thing as uh, the heavy, uh, heavy loaded palette knife, but I've changed the type, I'm sorry, not there, I've changed this to plow paint with grain, and Cher told you about how that works. And what that does is it allows me to really put in some heavy pressure, heavy amount of paint, and then as I increase my pressure, I'm going to cut into it and actually put in some texture. Now, I need to go back <laughs> to the right paper. And I also want to have this paper to be a little bit smaller. And I'm going to make it a little bit stronger like that. OK. All right, so what I would do in a case like this is I would probably start with some of the leaves. And your darker textures really, they tend to fall back, the darker colors tend to fall back in a uh, he heavy impasto or thick paint type painting. And you start bringing the lighter colors forward. So if it's, oops, if it's a lighter color, You would let that be a little thicker and let the darker color fall back. And you can control all that with these brushes. So I would probably start by, you know, doing that sort of thing, getting, getting more uh, uh, thick paint in here and um, defining these uh, green leaves a little bit. Now, I wouldn't define them uh, real well. You know, I would, I would just put in a few strokes here and there and, and come up with something. Then, once I've done that, I would start working with some of the flowers, and I would probably start with something that's in the background. And I might take this uh, uh, a dropper tool, and I would probably come down to about 11 by 11 average, and I would grab a color, and then I would come in and, you know, I would start defining the flower a little bit better. While you're painting, we yeah. had a couple questions wondering what kind of tablet are you using and kind okay. of. Okay. Right. Uh, at home, I, I'm uh, away at the moment from my house, but when I'm at home, I use um, a Cintiq, uh, a 24 inch uh, a Cintiq touch. Um, but here, I'm using my ON205. Um, the system I'm using right now is um, a, an Alienware. Uh, it's an Alienware Aurora 4. And um, I, at home, have another Alienware. And oops. It is a um, Alienware Area 51, 
And I have to tell you, those are screamers as far as uh, systems. I mean, they really do uh, scream. Um, and it's I, when I bought it, I, I pretty much got the fastest everything I could get. I work with three monitors, um, beside uh, two monitors beside the Cintiq. Um, so that I'm, I'm, you know, I have things over all different monitors, and um, let's see, that's about the extent of it, I would think. Uh, it really is fun working with a very fast system, but you don't have to have it. It's just, you know, I'm one of these old techie type people, and um, like Cher, I know, like Cher. I started my first, I got I never have worked with Max really except uh, as a you know kind of an experiment but I um, I started with PCs back in the 80s the first one was in 84 and I went with PCs I, I wanted to go with graphics but I couldn't justify buying a graphics computer I was a potter and I could justify a computer that would work with um, um, a uh, that could do business applications. And early on, Max did um, you know the graphics, and PCs did the business. And so I started with um, the PC, and my first graphics type program was Corel Draw One the very first one that came out. And, you know, I still have, I was going to send that to, to you guys, uh, Tanya, and I never did. I still have the original packaging for that Corel one that shows you what a crazy person I am. Uh, but I, I, I love that program. I, I just followed it on up until I got started with Painter. Uh, but back in the day, it was so versatile. Anyway, y'all see what's happening here is I'm adding to this painting just by going in here and changing the brush size and colors and so forth and just adding little stuff that makes it, um, you know, that the, what I'm trying to do is let the, the palette knife define the petals. And, and it really works pretty well. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I'm getting better and better with it. So that's the way it worked. Now this is as far as I got with the painting. I did. I started this this morning for the webinar, and so I. I uh oh, I think I may have lost you. Yeah. I, I'm back. I'm back. I sorry. Okay. About the I keep getting this notice that. It's testing new hardware, but anyway, this um, <laughs> this would be kind of the way the painting looks, and um, I'm trying to think if there was something else I wanted to. T I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I, I, good thing we're at the end of this because it looks like I'm going to be losing you from now on. Um, I can't remember anything right now off the top of my head that I wanted to tell you that I haven't told you. Um, so if, if there are questions or anything I can answer, let me know. Okay, so there is a question um, just in regards of these brushes that you're using. These are all included with Painter 2018, correct? Correct. Everything but heavy cut. Um, I just I was playing this morning, 
and kind of came up with this brush. Sorry, but every you know every time I play with painter because you can mess with the brushes and it's so easy. I'm always tweaking. Now most of the time I don't save it, but I did save this one. Um, so that's the only one that's not in Painter. And basically, if you took the heavy loaded palette knife, let's open up that white piece of paper. All right, so this is the heavy loaded palette knife, right? Okay, so if I took that and I go here and change this plow paint to plow paint with grain, that's going to begin to make this brush the same as what I just made. Um, I would then go to something like, I tell you what, let's just do it this way. We'll hit my heavy cut. All right, so what I would have done in, in this brush, I would have dropped the rate some. Yeah, see how that changed it considerably and gave me a little bit more of a cut. So, I mean, that's what I'm saying. It is so amazing what you can do here. You know, light um, heavy pressure uh, and then light pressure to cut back into it. You know, look at that. And then if I just hit reset, I'm right back up to that heavy brush that I had before. I think I'm on this, so let me, I've got to close this, get this thing out of my way. I had it closed earlier, there we go. All right, uh, yeah, ha no, I'm on heavy texture, sorry, I should be in loaded, heavy loaded palette. All right, let's clear this. All right, heavy loaded palette. And we are going to change this to, we already did, plowed paint with grain. I'm going to drop the rate. And I'm going to, I'm not going to add jitter to it. I'm going to bring the radius down a bit. That's going to give me too much of that stuff. Let's see. I want the spacing to be the same. Hardness can be the same. I'm going to come over here to my strength. I'm going to increase that a little bit. I'm going to increase the radius. And I'm going to drop my paint bristling. There we go. Now I'm getting the smooth and I'm getting the cut into it. I'm going to drop the paint load. Okay. And I'm going to leave the brush density there, but I want to drop the paint load even more. I'm going to bring this down a bit, and this back down. There we go. Okay, so heavy now, I'm getting, you know, plenty of stuff. Heavy pressure, light pressure, I'm getting thick. Heavy pressure, I'm cutting in. This brush has got a lot of blend with it. And when you press heavy, you're going to bring in more paint. If you press light, you're going to blend. Isn't that cool? It's awesome. So, I mean, and I yep. have to tell you, there I'm seems sorry. to be a lot of interest in brush making classes and, of course, learning more about thick paint. Unfortunately, um, I wish I could have you keep presenting. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Uh -huh. I want to show off just a few other things that are new in 2018, and I'm going to try and keep it really quick for everybody. Um, I am not an artist, 
so <laughs> I will do my best. Um, I don't have the talent that Cher and Skip have, but yeah, I'd like to show a few things. So uh, Skip, do you have any courses planned at Digital Art Academy to showcase Thick Paint right now? Uh-oh. Yes, absolutely, I do. Um, as a matter of fact, we have just put up registration for uh, a class called Painter 2018. Is it real paint? And um, it is showcasing what's new in Painter 2018. So it'll cover thick paint, it'll cover the selection brushes, it'll cover the new natural uh, variants library. It'll cover, oh, the new cloning stuff. It's really cool. Um, oh, texture synthesis. I mean, it'll cover all of that. Uh, and the class will start July the 8th, but you can register now. Love it. Thank you so much. That's okay. fantastic to hear. And I want to ensure everybody that we're also going to be releasing more tutorials and, you know, I will work with and share and we'll keep giving you more in-depth information about these new brushes because there's a lot that you can do with them, um, a lot that you can customize and achieve and we're super excited about it. So with that, I'm very sorry, Skip, um, that I had to cut you off like that. <laughs> we're no, at the that's top fine. Of the so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to me and if you all can just let me know that you're seeing my screen here. Sorry, I'm going to now minimize palette here. Can, can you see Painter open? Skip or share since you guys aren't muted. I yes. can. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. Okay, good. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right in, everybody, and hopefully I won't blow your head off with my speed here. Um, but I just want to make sure that you see some of these other new fantastic tools that we have in Painter. So Cher and Skip did a great job of showing you this new thick paint. And for anybody that's new to Painter, you may not have heard about our texture brushes that we introduced in 2017. Well, what I'm going to show you now is actually taking the texture brushes to the next level. So I opened up um, this, and this was actually originally a 3D model. It was flattened. It was brought into Painter. You can also save a model out with multiple layers. We don't import 3D, so you bring it in in a 2D format, and this was created by Harry Bunda and his creative team. He's one of our new painter masters. So I've got my robot here, and what I'd like to do is to add a little thick texture to him. And the very first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and load up a, an alpha selection. And this is why I clicked over on the channel. So if you just take a look over on the right, I've got an alpha channel. And you know we've got selection tools in Painter, and we actually have enhancements for those as well. But to save the time, I already had the selection created. And um, I'm working on a Mac. I'm just going to Option Shift H, or sorry, Control Shift H, and that just turns the display of the selection off. And I'm going to come down here in the brush selector. There are two different types of texture brushes. Texture cover covers everything that's on the canvas. What we want to do is to enhance, in this case, the robot or maybe you might be working with a photo and you want to add some texture to it. So I'm going to select. Um, if we take a look, I'm going to keep this open for you for just a second. There are some new brushes and they're 2.5D. So these are the brushes that have depth to them. You'll find them in texture source blending, in cover, in all kinds of other categories within Painter. You can use the search window to search for these. But let me show you what they do. All right, so um, I'm going to go ahead and select a texture to work from. And what's very handy is that the property bar, when I have a texture brush selected, it gives me kind of all the tools I need at my fingertips up here. So I can quickly select a texture, or 
I could even launch the full panel if I wanted to. So I've got my texture painting panel here. And I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the texture. So I can turn that on to display what it looks like. We don't really need it on right now. And I'm going to start painting away. OK, so and I know sometimes I've been doing some online presentations for the media. And uh, sometimes go to meetings, things slow up a little bit on your end. So I'm going to try and paint a little bit slow here so you can see what's happening. And what is happening, I can switch between these different textures, is that it's building the texture up on the canvas. And in this case, because I have the robot sitting here on the canvas, it's also respecting the lighting. I can paint over whatever part of this robot that I want to. Now if I pick the stylus up and I come back down and I start painting again, it's going to add more depth and only you know, where I'm touching the stylus down on the tablet. So the more I brush, the more texture. Um, I can be very light-handed and have a subtle texture. And of course, I'm not going to go into any of the advanced controls, but you can modify the settings of these brushes. So we've got the size and the opacity. You can change your textures and how much or how little of the texture you want exhibited. Um, let's just for fun, switch to a different kind of 2 and a half d brush. So now I've got the Surface Builder. And what I like about this one is that this is actually going to incorporate um, the color of, that I have selected. So you'll see here, and this is actually, oh, it would help if I chose one that actually had some color. Right, guys? So let's choose Death Paint here. And I'll begin painting. And now you can see like um, it's actually picking up the color that we have selected in the color wheel over here. Okay, So I can choose the color and have that incorporate that within my stroke. Or I can say, hey, let's just use the color of the texture itself and paint with that. So now it's just directly picking up the um, color of the texture that we have. So there's all kinds of fun brushes to play around with in here. There's this scratcher. And keep in mind, I told you guys I'm not trying to create something beautiful here. <laughs> so now you can see you know, this one kind of scratches and builds up that thick texture. Um, so there's all kinds of fun brushes to experiment with in the source blending, the cover, and elsewhere within Painter. So let's go ahead and close out of this, because I want to show you where the real talent in using these brushes is. My quick down and dirty demo just gave you an idea. But Harvey actually painted this robot for us. And this is so impressive. So if you take a look here, you can see that he was um, not quite as heavy handed as I was. And he was able to you know, more subtly incorporate textures in a variety of areas within the robot, along with colors, a little bit of glow. So there's so many possibilities with this. And I encourage you all to download the 30-day trial and check it out. So that is thick texture. Next, um, you saw when I turned the texture on that it covered the whole canvas. But that is not always the case. So we have now added something that we call texture synthesis. And I've been going a little bit crazy, um, going around town, taking pictures grabbing stuff from online. A lot of times, things that inspire me are very small in size. So with this, I'm going to just take a quick look at the size of this image. So this is 500 by 334 pixels. That's pretty tiny. Probably not going to cover a full canvas if I wanted to paint with this. So to resolve this issue, we've added something called texture synthesis. And what you can do here, and this is all within the texture painting panel, and all the way down at the bottom there. So I just double click to expand it. It's saying, OK, Tanya, what do you want to do? Um, I want to take this texture, and I want to make it bigger. So I opened it in Painter. It's not in the texture library. I could also select something that was already in the library. I'm going to say, let's work from the document. And I need to make a selection of the area that I want 
container to analyze the DNA of in order to create a larger texture. So keeping things simple, I'm just going to control A, command A, um, depending upon the platform you're on, I'm selecting the whole brick texture. Then we come down to the middle here, and there's something called tile settings. And I, for the most part, use random seed. And this means, okay, Painter's going to do the job for me. It's going to look at this DNA, and it's going to generate the texture automatically for me. Because this texture has got, um, it's very blocky, it's got horizontal elements, it's not something like, for instance, maybe leaves scattered on the ground or dirt on the ground. I'm not going to turn scramble on. Scramble works well for more random types of textures. What's going to happen with this? It's going to shoot the new texture on a new layer. And I'm doing this because I want you guys to see this texture actually build up. So I forgot the original. Um, I'm just going to say, let's make it 1,500 by 1,334. The larger you make it, um, you know, a little bit longer it'll take to process. And I don't want to make you guys wait any longer than you need to right now. But you can certainly pump this up to whatever size you want. Now I'm going to click Start and take a look at what's happening. So when you put the texture on a layer, it builds in front of your eyes. You can see it's building the texture based on the original. It's not exactly the same, and it never will be exactly the same. Every time I say, create this texture for me, it's going to generate something that's slightly different. So it's similar in the respect of if any of you have used auto painting, no two auto paintings are ever alike either. So if we just quickly come over to the layers palette, I'm going to turn off the bricks layer. That's where I put the new texture. Oh, let me stop here first. Um, turn the visibility off. There's the original. And here's my new one. OK, so pretty cool. I'm going to go ahead and dump this. Um, my go-to meeting control panel is getting in my way. So move that over. And I'm going to show you one other thing quickly. So let's say that we're going to generate this from the document. This time, I want you to go right into my texture library. Um, so this is what it'll do if you choose to pop it right into the library. And then it'll ask me to name it once it's done synthesizing. So you can do all kinds of fun things with these textures. And I showed you with the 2 and a half D and the robot something you could do. So next. Once this is in the library, I'm going to go ahead and open up a painting. And we're going to emboss a texture on there. What I'd like to try is you know, taking a painting and maybe making it look like it's graffiti on a wall. You can paint from these textures um, just on the canvas the way that I'm doing. You can also paint with textures when you're clone painting. And I'll show you a little bit of how to do that as well. So I appreciate all of you. If you're still sticking with us here, <laughs> I know the webinar is a little bit long today, but we are recording the session. And we'll have it up on YouTube.com, Painter Tutorials, as soon as it's done processing. I'll pop it up there today. And a lot of the other questions that I was getting were in regards of, do you have a special offer price? Yes, we have a special full and upgrade offer for everybody on the webinar today. And you will receive that information in our follow-up from, you'll get a follow-up email from GoToWebinar, um, more than likely tomorrow morning. So you'll get the special offer at that time. OK, so there's my brick. Go ahead and save it. We take a look over in the library. And I've got my new brick text. So let's close out of this. I'm going to open up a beautiful Dan Milligan painting. And let's just get a nice preview for you guys here. And I've got the texture selected. And we're going to come back to the stencil soft emboss. And I'm just going to size the brush up really big because I want to cover a lot of ground all at once. Okay, So now I can make it look like she's on a brick wall. Maybe get a little bit of her hair here if I go over her face. And if I get a little bit too aggressive, that looks like a little bit too much. This is when you can actually go back to your impasto brushes. And the depth eraser will allow you to remove a little bit of the depth if you want to. Or you could have painted the texture 
on a layer. Okay, so I hope that this is coming across um, okay for everybody. You can see this. So now I just started removing some of the texture. But that's a little bit more about the thick texture and the possibilities that you have for working with it. All right, so cloning. I know a lot of you were asking me about this um, when Care and Skip were presenting. And I also know that Carrie, um, Carrie Nansted is on the webinar. I'm not sure if she's still with us. This is her original photo. You will also see her painting. I'll pull it up for you. And it's also in our new video that we'll be launching later today. Um, so what I'm going to do here is a little bit of photo painting. And from the window menu, if I go to Layout, I am going to select the Photo Art Layout. And what this does is it gives me all the tools that I need to get this painting done. So I don't have to go hunting and pecking for um, you know, the variety of tools that I want to work with. So the very first thing, I'm going to come over here to the photo art palette, and there's under painting. I'm not going to worry about digital darkroom work. Her photo is pretty beautiful to begin with. So I'm going to say, just go ahead and auto clone that. And let's make sure that we just uh, set that so that you all can see what's going to happen here. Then I'm going to go to auto painting. And I love to cheat because I am not exactly somebody that has a whole lot of blank canvas painting <laughs> talent. Um, so the nice thing about auto painting is that you're not stuck. So it put me into the smart stroke brush category. It will paint with colors from the photo. It will do the same if you select cloners. You can select any brush you want to in all of Painter. I'm going to select my Sargent brush. This is one of the um, most loved brushes in Painter. And when you stray from a smart stroke or a cloning category, you need to ensure before you click the auto painting that you click clone color. And what that's going to do is it's going to pull the colors from the clone source. Command or Control T. I'm going to turn the original off, and we're going to paint away. And one of the other new things that we have added in 2018 are enhancements to our drip and liquid technology. So I, I can stop before the painting is done. And before, in Painter 2017 or any version before 2018, you can never paint with the Sargent brush on a layer. So now I just added a new layer. I can come up here. I can start painting away with my Sargent brush. And it's not just the Sargent brush. We've actually added um, a whole new brush category. So if I come down, we get out of the artist's favorites, and we come over to Sargent. I'm going to use this drippy jellyfish. So we've given you some new drip and liquid technology brushes that you can use. So see how now it's painting with the blue? So if I want to, once again, paint with colors from the clone source, I just click that little guy, and now I can paint away. Okay, so keep in mind I said I'm not trying to create something very beautiful. This is why I'll open Carrie's painting <laughs> before we move on. Um, so being able to paint on layers, you know, you can pick up underlying color and blend with what's underneath it, that is brand new to 2018. But what else can we do? Um, if we take a look in the clone source, previously you just had clone source images. So now I could say, hey, I want to paint with a texture. And I'm going to come down here and take a look at what we have, um, not only a texture, but you can now have clone sources that support transparency. Let me just select one of these guys here. And I'll go ahead and show you the texture. So we've given you a few samples um, in the library that already have transparency supported. If I go ahead and select this kind of leafy texture <coughs> here, I think I've got a, a sticky, sticky stylus today. Um, so this is something that might happen to you. And I wanted to show you this because this texture is not filling my entire canvas. Okay, We showed you how to use texture synthesis to address that. You could generate a larger texture if you wanted to using synthesis. Also have the ability to transform on the fly. So let's go ahead and I'm going to select transform textures. And I've got the move and scale size here. And I'm just going to you know, very quickly drag that up, fill the canvas. I'm going to commit that. 
turn it off, and then I'll pop this over here. And now, my favorite brush, this emboss brush, check out what you can do. Okay, so you can now emboss or incorporate any kind of texture that you want to. We can do this in our cloning workflow, which is fantastic. I could also import transparent images if I wanted to. So from here, right from the clone source library, go ahead and click this little guy here. I'm going to grab my ladybug. And if we show the ladybug, now we can start doing the same thing. So this is super neat, you guys, and it's really going to help with compositing efforts. So, you know, I can resize my little ladybug here, maybe sink it down, move it wherever I want, and once I commit, I can start painting from this as my clone source. And I think you guys probably get the idea of everything I'm doing here. So paint from whatever clone source you want, whether it has transparency or doesn't have transparency. Let's just go ahead and turn the texture off. And I just a straight soft cloner. For time's sake, I'm not going to worry about painting with individual brushes here. So those are some of the new cloning capabilities. So have fun checking those out. Go ahead and close out of this because I have more to show you. And next up, we have selections. Come out and to help me out here. Oh, Carrie, I'm so sorry. I forgot to open up your painting. Let me open up her beautiful painting so you can actually see what that final painting looks like. So that's what Carrie created. If you spend more time than I did in the couple minutes that I tried to create something. Thanks again, Carrie. So I'll go ahead and close that out. We're back to Jack's wacky painting here. Um, and I'll go ahead and zoom in. And if we take a look over in the property bar, let's just collapse some of these palettes so that it, we can free up space. Right where the magic wand is, anytime you see a little arrow there, these are flyouts. I'm going to select the selection brush tool. This is brand new. The property bar allows me to adjust size of the brush, um, you know, all kinds of things. I'm going to say, let's go ahead and just come over here and I'm going to add some selections. Some of you are asking for Skip to go over the interactive, interactive gradients. So I'll give you a little taste for this right now. Um, I can subtract, you know, make a crazy wacky selection. So using Painter's unique brush tips, you can get some really wonderful types of selections and you can make them quickly. Now, if I come over and I grab my interactive gradient, you have all different kinds to choose from, linear, radial, um, circular, spiral. Let's just stick with this swimming pool since it kind of goes with the color scheme we have here. And I just click and drag within my selection. And there's more that you can do. So we've filled, and you know, you can keep adjusting this on the fly as you see fit until you're happy with it. We can also do things like auto paint the gradient. So I'm going to go ahead and do that for you. So hopefully this is coming across in the GoToWebinar. It is now painting with these heavy dab strokes. I'm going to turn the selection off. And this is a, a nice way I could quickly fill a portion of a background with painterly effect if I wanted to. So that is a selection brush from the toolbar. But now I'm going to come up to the brush selector because we've got some other cool brushes for you. So let's go to selection brushes. And with this particular crazy character, I'm going to grab the ladder selection. Go ahead and ladder. So this is, it looks like it's painting red, but the red is just the display color for our selection. And you can change that. If you don't like red, you can change it to a different color. Once you release, then you only have the selection here. So I'm going to do what I like to do, which is fill with texture. And we're going to pick a nice veiny texture here. And once again, this isn't in the location that I need it to be, so I'm just going to do a quick transformation, commit, 
and new capability. Now let's turn that off so you guys don't have to look at that texture. Being able to with textures. Well, a collection. You can, and I hear a little echo. I'm going to go ahead and fill with texture. And I can adjust the opacity here if I want to. But I actually put this collection on a layer. So then you can start having some fun using your, um, your layer merge mode. Okay, so we can start changing to different things and playing around this way. So that is the, the new selection brush tool in the tool palette, your selection brushes. You can create your own selection brushes. And thanks to Jack Whitney for submitting this really awesome work of art and uh, allowing me to have a little bit of fun with it in my demo here. All right, so I have one more thing, and it's a very simple um, yet powerful tool for you all. So I'll just open up a blank canvas, and I'm going to select a hard media type. And this was a request from a lot of our artists. And this is in order to make strokes look more realistic. So I'm going to grab my chalk pastel and crayons, my real fat chalk, and we're going to grab a, maybe the marble substrate texture. And I'm just going to pop open the papers panel here, because this is where you'll want to go if you want to use this. Once you select your paper, we've got something um, down here called random grain rotation. So let's just use brush as it would have been in 2017 or before. Okay, so um, with the hard media, it's going to catch the ridges of paper texture, and you know I can pick up, I can kind of layer these different colored strokes on top of one another. But this paper texture is static; it looks exactly the same no matter where I pick up and I put my brush down. What we can do now is to incorporate a little bit of random grain rotation into our stroke. And every time that I pick up and I put this stylus back down on the canvas, it's slightly rotating the paper texture and giving me a much more natural, organic look. It doesn't look so digital like this. It now looks much more like the real world. And that's random grain rotation. You know, I said it's a small little thing that makes a huge difference in the end result of your work. Um, so I don't think I quite went through all of that as quickly as I was hoping to, <laughs> but that should give you all a good taste for everything that's new in Painter 2018. So Chris, um, I don't know if you're still with me here and if you would like to say anything before we close out. Hey, Jenny, yeah, I'm still here. Can you hear me all right? Yeah. OK, thanks. Yeah, no, um, I just wanted to thank um, both Skip and Cher for coming on today and helping walk us through and showing some of their workflows. Um, and thanks to everybody on the line who showed up to hear about sort of the, the surprise Painter 2018 webinar. And thanks to all of you for sticking through. Sorry we went a little longer than expected. Um, but there's just so many things that we wanted to talk about today. So um, yeah, so it's definitely very exciting. And other than that, I hope everybody enjoys Painter 2018, and, and thanks everybody again for showing up. Thanks so much, everybody, and thanks, Sharon Skip. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Tanya. Such a pleasure to work with you all. Yes, you too, Cher. Have Thank a great you. day, everybody. I hope you enjoy Thank Painter you. 2018. Happy Painting, uh, everybody. <laughs>